now to witness to a co-worker who is a black man who claims to be a black Hebrew Israelite. They're trusting in keeping the law in order to get to heaven. And so I've been trying to focus on how the law is not going to save him, get him to heaven. Mm. He also believes Jews and Gentiles are the same thing. Uh, I've used Galatians uh, chapter 2 and 3 to try to explain these things to him. But if you have other good resources or advice, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Phil, I'm always so encouraged when our listeners are sharing the gospel with friends and coworkers. And of course, one of the things I, I say every single time is you need to be praying because it is a work of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to pray for you right now, Phil, uh, in your inter- interaction with, with this uh, coworker and just that the Lord would give you the right words, but also that he would open the heart of this individual. And so, Lord, thank you for Phil and his desire to share his faith that there, the black Hebrew Israelites is, is one of them. And there are even sects among the, the Hebrew Israelites scattered abroad throughout the world. I mean, I, I, I hear more about these groups, and, and oftentimes they're known um, for street preaching. You know, being out on the street, and and uh, in some ways they're 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 also known for being a little more abrasive. Um, there's this belief that they have that they are the true descendants of the the children of Israel, the the the, the scattered uh, tribes of the Israelites, and they're. There's a lot of um, sort of interesting theological views that they hold, sort of merging together some some Hebrew beliefs, Jewish beliefs with some some Christian beliefs. Often, though, there's the rejection of the deity of Christ and his atoning work. And so that's where I think you need to focus. Sounds like you going to the book of, I mean, obviously Galatians is is really good um, because there Paul talks about uh, the fact that we, we can't be saved by following these these works of law these religious rituals they're uh, you know particularly associated with the old covenant religion uh, but just but just this idea of being saved by our obedience more generally um, you can't be saved by your obedience to god we don't obey god enough we don't obey god perfectly enough all of us sin against god in thought word and deed and so i i think maybe highlighting even phil just the teaching of jesus related to god's law of Jesus related to God's law. Let me read the Sermon on the Mount. What does Jesus say? If you look at a woman to lust for her, you've already committed adultery in your heart. All of us are struck dead. By- I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well. To you followers, you believers of this truth, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, uh, I ran across this video. This guy said he um, he was calling in on a radio show, and he said he asked a Christian, well, he asked a, a, a Hebrew Israelite um, something about, um, you know, trying to convert him to be, come back to Christianity. You know, scripture says if a man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. If he says he doesn't want to do it, you got to let that go. Um, but these Christians are just hard-headed. They're trying to get us back into that plantation captivity. Now, due to the awakening of the Hebrew Israelites, you got many different doctrines. Some believe in um, wholeheartedly keeping the law, okay, which still makes them a better person than a Christian, right? I mean, as far as false Christianity where they tell you don't keep the law, right? So there's a balance in between there, right? The law is not going to save us. No, but we must try to establish the law. We'll we'll get that in the scriptures because you just can't throw it out and say, okay, we ain't got to keep any laws. This man literally said, you look at a woman and lust after her sin. This is the mindset of Christianity and what they've done and that agenda, you know, to cut, you know, Jake back. That's the best way I could say it. So Jake won't be getting it, getting down, you know. So they told us we looked at a woman and we lust. It was sin. But I thought that's what bring forth children. Lust. There's nothing wrong with lusting 
after a woman? Where do they get this stuff from? If you took that out of every man's spirit in this world, <clears throat> there would be lack thereof of children. Every woman would feel like, damn, no man is even looking at me. It's no reason to put on all the makeup. I mean, nowadays it's out of control. But the attention of what, why they dress up and why they do what they do is because they really want the lust. This is crazy, man. What, who, I, you know, I don't know who made that up. That goes back to old plantationism, man. Not to look at a woman. If you look at a woman and you see her and she's, she's beautiful and <laughs> you can't lust, which goes back to desire. Come on, man. That sounds like something uh, uh, going the other way, if you ask me. Let me look up this word. You know, and he, a lot of these Christians look like this, man. You know, it says intense sexual desire, <laughs> right? So I thought in order to, to do that, you must have some form of desire. I don't know. Intense longing. I mean, I did read the scripture where I believe it was Isaac took Rebecca in his mother's tent in the book of Genesis and loved her I'm pretty sure there was some lust lust involved but anyway <laughs> you can't make this up but this is what we were taught he went into Galatians 3 and 28 that a Jew or Greek that word Greek we went into several times remember we were Hellenized Jews you look at the word Grecian Greek and Grecian Grecian means uh, Hellenistic Greek speaking Jews so we can clearly see that this word Greek can go, go different folds like many other words in the Bible. Now, if I had a conversation with a Christian, uh, he'd have left scratching his head or any of us in Great Millstone. And maybe that other brother, whoever it was that was uh, teaching him may have said it too, but we go a little bit deeper. We'd have pulled out the blue letter. We'd have went into the, the um, terminology, the, the etymology. And really got in a better understanding of the words. We would also show, that's why we do these videos. You had, like we have Americans and African Americans, you have Israelites. If you, if you gave a sentence or a poll, the average person would say, hey, I'm, I'm Christian or I'm Baptist or I'm this, I'm that. They wouldn't write down that they're a Hebrew Israelite. So they wouldn't accept being a Hebrew Israelite. So it would be considered as a heathen man. In fact, when you go into the old Bible, when it were Gentile, which originally wasn't in the Bible, that was a Latin word brought on by St. Jerome. Now, that word really just meant heathen. So it would say whether Jew or Greek or Jew or heathen, that could have been there too. Because you had, you had Greek-speaking Jews, you had uh, murmuring Jews, who you had Jews who believed, right? And then you had Jews who spoke Greek, and believe, and then you had Jews who didn't believe, right? So this was the whole mission of Paul was all about. But anyway, let's go to Galatians. Well, I just read that there is neither Jew or slave. I'm reading different contexts. Um, there is neither Jew or Gentile. See, in the NIV it says Jew or Gentile. It don't even say Greek. These are placement words. This is all brought on by universalism. And universalism is what popularized certain words. And they put Greek there. They put Gentile there. Whether Jew or Gentile. Gentile just means foreigner. Just like stranger, right? You had strangers as, as strangers of, uh, uh, of the covenant or other nations. And you had strangers as Israelites, right? So it went to, to, twofold in some cases. So you look at Gentile is another word for stranger or foreigner. Okay. So it says there neither Jew nor Gentile, which originally the word wasn't there. In fact, let's go to first Corinthians. Before I go on more about the law, which we go over and over again. Um, and this is what they harp on. Let's go to either 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians um, before we go into the law because you got to understand it was there was um, 
It was different Gentiles, according to the Bible. Even stranger, you know, Moses' son was named Gershom, and it, and it means uh, stranger in a strange land. He said, because I was a stranger in a strange land. So Moses would have been considered a form of a stranger, right? We can go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 2. It says, well, we'll go to one. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. So this is right here solidifies this word Gentile can mean you being a part of another nation. Or you can be being called of another nation. Just like you had Caleb's father, Caleb the Kenizzite. Right? You had Simon the Zealot. Whenever you see such and such, the such and such, it always, uh, they always identify with another nation, but they're still Israelites. You got our people calling, calling themselves every, each and everything. Right? You got our people calling themselves African American as an ethnicity. Their religion is Christianity. Right? Or they believe in atheism, Buddhism, and everything else. Or they're merging it with their ethnicity. You know, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says there's no new thing under the sun. So now we're going to go into the law a little bit. Um, the Christians believe that the law is done away with. The curse of the law. Right? And the reason why it's become a curse to us because we never followed it. And now that we're in captivity, we can't keep it fully but let's see what the apostle paul said because you have israelites just as today hebrew israelites who believe it's all about the law this is nothing new but yet they can't keep many things that's in the law anyway for as many this is romans 2 and in 12 uh it says let me go up to 9. It says, Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. Right? We just went into that word Gentile. How it can be char uh, characterized as, another, uh, as the same nation or another nation. It says the Jew uh, first, and then the Gentile. Right? Um, and then it says, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that work of good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Right? This is why you have the Greek and the Grecian. And you look up the word Grecian, it just simply means Hebrew speaking Jew. For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh. It says, for as many have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. Right? You got people who came in the world who never had the law and they died without the law and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law so when you look at the law the law was made for sinners right so once you wake up to the truth you're going to be judged technically you'll be judged accordingly right for not hearers of the law for not the hearers of the law are justified before Yahweh, before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So we have a situation where you you have a situation where it's being said to keep the law and not keep the law. And that's where the confusion comes in. But you have to keep the law to the best of your ability. This goes to the first commandment. To love the Lord God with all your, the Lord power, Yahweh, with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength and soul. How are these Christians claiming they're loving the Lord when they're not being doers of anything dealing with the law? And they're saying, well, since the law is done away with, I'm, I have grace and mercy. Where now, with the grace and mercy, I don't have to do anything. Right? I can... I can eat whatever I want. I can eat all the crabs and shrimp, all the abominable foods, which even scientists say that's not good to eat. I think most people know this, but people want to 
continue to do follow their own belly. So you got Christians now that are saying, oh, don't worry about the law. Don't worry about it. You're all good. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. So show me when the one you call Jesus, who they claim says all things are lawful to eat, which would be lawful foods. Show me where he ate swine. Show me where he got some crabs out of the, uh, where, um, was it Peter? Andrew? Where they fished? Could be wrong, but where they fished and they decided to keep some crabs. What about the multitude? Did they feed the multitude fish, lobster, shrimp, oysters? Right? When the Lord drowned the pigs and he drowned them in the water, the water represents purification anyway, purifying. Because some people say don't even drink the water then. Just idiots. That was the representation of being purified. That's why he got baptized. The ultimate, ultimate baptismal. So you can clearly see the understanding of trying to keep the law. That you had people who kept the law carnally. They didn't keep it spiritually. It was all about the law. Except about faith. That's why he went into the law of faith. Okay, so anyway, let's go further on. I don't want to hang up on that one. Let's go to um, um, let's go to Romans um, six and fourteen. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Right, you're not under law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law? But under grace, God forbid. Now, what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. That is what sin is. It is the transgression of the law, which is a really big deal, right? So you can't keep the law fully, but you got to do it to the best of your ability. And that's the whole point of our captivity, not being able to keep the law. This is why Yahweh came. That was that mercy. That grace and mercy. I'm a. Uh, it's a lot to go into, but I'm gonna just hit hit you know the quick points. Romans three and twenty seven. Where is the boasting then? Is it excluded by, by the law of works? Nay, but the law of faith. That's what I just said earlier. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And this is what the Christians say. Hey, justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Why? Because it ain't that you don't try to keep it. But you, it's because you can't keep it is where you're justified by the faith. You can't keep it 100%, right? It is the, it is the, God, is the God of the Jews only. Is he not of the Gentiles? Yes, the Gentiles also. Why? Because you had murmuring about that. These, these, these heathens aren't going to wake up. They're not up with us. Goes on to say, see, and it is one, uh, one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Uh, Romans 7. I'm getting to the point. What shall we say then? Is the law is the law sin? God forbid. Nay. So these people are trying to say the law is corrupt. It's sinful. How is not eating crabs uh, corrupt? How is not committing adultery corrupt? How is not sleeping with your neighbor's wife and sleeping with your mother and your sister how is that not corrupt? How is not th thieving and stealing and murder and deceit? How is that not corrupt? This is crazy, man. For I had, uh, it says, for I had not known lust except the law had said. These Christians don't understand the Bible. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of consequence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died in the commandment. Right? So it says, you know, because if you don't have the law, you know, how, how can you sin? You know? You're, in your mindset, you ain't doing nothing wrong. That's what these Christians are doing. They, they're walking around like they're not sinning. It says, um which was ordained to my life, to life. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found 
to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceiving me and by slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment, uh, commandment holy, just and good. Right? So that's why he said the law was for sinners. You had, uh, you know, you got people today who believe they're not sinners or they might still say they're sinners, but they're not trying to do the works of the law at all. Right? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do allow, not for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate that I do. Which I read that in another video. So, you know, the bottom line is, um, you have to keep the law to the best of your ability. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with keeping the law. I don't know why these people, I don't know why these other Israelite groups say you're going to be saved by the law when we know it's dealing with faith, right? The Lord didn't have to have us do all these extra ceremonies or whatever, you know? But the thing is, the thing is, the law is what's going to, um, I mean, the faith is what's going to save us through the, through the works of the law. That's why uh, James 2 says faith without works is dead. What is the works? Doing the works of the, the Heavenly Father told us to do. He still gave us an instruction book. You can't sit up there and say, okay, I don't need to follow what the Lord told me to do. Well, that's what the law is all about. That's crazy, man. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.